Hi everyone, Pete and Greta uh, here. Hello everyone. Oops, uh, I've just checked my, oh yeah, I'm hooked up, yeah. Um, tonight we have a fun topic that we want to talk to you about and a, a real game changer and that's asking for help. <laughs> and um, I really want to talk about it because it's something that Pete and I learned later in life and we wished, I wish that we learned this earlier, that we'd been more aware of this earlier. Um, so uh, at the start of this week, we were shifting furniture around and um, we wanted to replace a set of bunk beds in our Airbnb cottage, which is about 50 meters away from our house. And Pete, um, I pulled the bedding apart of a set of bunk beds that we had in this house and I uh, took it in the washing machine and then I got distracted. And then uh, <laughs> 10 minutes later, I noticed Peter cutting the bunk beds towards the cottage all by himself one at a time and which is about 50 meters away and straight away i was reminded of the fact <coughs> that peter finds it really really hard to ask for help he virtually never never asks for help I, he just takes it in his stride and I, I guess it's proving to myself that i can do it by <clears> myself and this is exactly what I want to talk about tonight, that there are more intelligent ways. And easier ways. And more enjoyable yeah, ways. More enjoyable yeah, ways. Yeah. To, um, when you actually ask for help can be the most intelligent, most profitable, most um, transforming way to, to up-level your life and to increase your and, happiness. And not, not to wait to ask for help when you know you just can't do it by yourself. <laughs> yeah, but even <laughs> when if you stuck. can do it by yourself, yeah, I know. I want to say this not, as not well. to wait to that point, <coughs> but to There are ask, many things yeah. that we can do by ourselves, yeah. uh, and this is in a relationship and in a business and in all aspects of your life. And yet, if, we, uh, if you only knew how much better it could be if you actually um, included help and support if you were open to help and support so that's another thing and because a lot of us we will finally ask for help when we're completely stuck or our life's gone to shit or something like <laughs> that and then you're scrambling around for an expert so in our professional life and in our business life um, Pete and I started to um, ask for help well actually probably already in 2009 when we um, really seriously started to up level our personal development so that's 11 years ago um, and but if I had my life over again I would do it much sooner I probably yeah. would have started to do that when I was 20 and I'm 58 now and Peter is 62 and uh, I guess every year we would easily spend $50,000 on our personal development so that's like paying for high level coaches and people to guide us through our business and also in our relationship and in our family life and in well, all aspects of life. Often when you're in the middle of it you can't see it no. yourself. And There's so like... many moving parts in mm. our lives and um, I know when I work with my clients um, the way that I help them and release their energy and help them move forward and show them life lessons. We do this together, by the way. I know that sometimes it would have taken them a whole lifetime and maybe several lifetimes to learn. So this is extremely valuable um, that Pete and I want to talk about. So actually, I, I just want to say um, um, when I left Holland, I migrated when I was 19 just after I turned 19, which at the time thought was actually really, really old. I thought I could do it. I thought oh, I could old do it. and wise. Yeah. And I met Pete. Um, so I came back to Tasmania with him. And when it came to saying goodbye at the airport in Holland, uh, my father said his parting message was, don't expect us, that means him and my mom, don't expect us to come and visit you in Tasmania because it's just not going to happen. It's more or less goodbye. And uh, uh, people would perhaps say, you've yeah. made your bed and now you can lie. And that is, that's a sort of an English expression. That's really what he was trying to say. And I think he really meant it well. And I never expected any help from my parents 
because also they weren't in a, in a place to, to give it to me. But I actually didn't expect any help from anyone ever. So I became incredibly stubborn and I became a bit of a slave driver. So I really bullied myself. And Peter was much the same because he was tired with the same brush. Well, what you can't do yourself, you just... Yeah. And so this is how we lived our lives. And, um, and in hindsight, I know that it wasn't a good thing. It wasn't a good thing for me. It wasn't a good thing for Pete. It wasn't good for our marriage. And it wasn't good for our children. I should say it wasn't the best thing. We could have had a, a better life with more fun, more loving, more joy, and more um, harmony if I had been open to help and if I'd even expected and ask for help. And yeah, the... so one reason I think why it always took me so long to ask for help, I literally had to get hit by a truck first in 2006. And I was like 40-ish um, uh, at the height of my career. I was really strong. My children were teenagers and I was in a really good spot. I was fit. And then, of course, I got hit by a truck. And that taught me then to ask for help because literally I couldn't do anything for for 10 weeks at least. And for instance, sometimes um, breakfast would be dropped off at the hospital ward where I was lying flat on my back, but it was out of my reach. So it was like put at the foot end and I wouldn't be able to reach it. And I still struggle to ask for help. I, I still find it so difficult to ask anyone can you please uh, move my breakfast up so that I could actually, you know, lie there and put a little bit in my mouth. In fact, I think I prefer to just go hungry. And so that's how deeply ingrained it was in me. So, um, and for a lot of people, I know this now, I really know this, so this is a real heartfelt message. Um, how do I say it? You remain stuck in your life. You can't move forward. You can't be the the you can't be the change or make the difference that you're meant to be making as a human being here on earth. You can't even fulfill your soul mission. I don't think without uh, asking for help, because there is a saying that it takes a team to get to the top of Mount Everest. Isn't that mm. the saying, yeah. Pete? Like you can't. Make yeah. it to the top of Mount Everest without a Sherpa, without a coach, without planning, without help. And so asking for help more often, that's the message. Mm. That's actually, I'm here to say, tell you, it's really intelligent. One, one of our coaches, one thing that really helped me and spurred me on was they told us a saying, speed, accuracy and support. Yeah. So when you strike a problem, hit it straight with, away, with, don't straight put away, it off, don't be put onto it, off, it. So that's speed. And, and make it make the make it accurate what you want. The solution. The solution and ask for support. Yeah, and ask for yeah. support. Speed, accuracy, support. That, One of our coaching yeah. teams mm -hmm. was really big on that. That's mm -hmm. a few years ago. And so we um, we had a tendency probably to put things in a too hard basket well, sometimes. You keep on putting it yeah, off. Yeah, and then in the end, like you have sticky notes <laughs> everywhere, and sticky notes bubbling out of your brain, you could say. And half the reason we sometimes didn't ask people was we probably thought nobody's got the answer or, just because we couldn't or, see it. Or I, I was brought up, if you can do it yourself, you're saving money. Yeah. So you, but... It's if, not true. Th that's not true. It's costing you lots of money. Quite often I've done a job and then... It's need, maybe I have done it, but I haven't been like the professional and it may need redoing. And, and that's like, like that. not even how I think Peter wasted a lot of his money that he could have been spent in the business. He wasted time, I mean. So there's a saying that you spend 80% of your time on um, and you get 20% profit from it, but you need to make it the other way around, like spend 20% percent of your time so that you have 80 percent benefit that's the rule of 2080 so asking for help and um, asking the expert 
is one of the best strategies in your life and it brings you fulfillment and it gives your life meaning and then it's actually a process of uh, coming back and asking asking again and asking again and so um i just want to share a coaching moment i'll ask pete what was a really really important what i call a coaching moment that a big aha went off for peter and it really changed his life and i want to share you one of mine well okay. that speed accuracy and support was one of them and another one was i don't give a fuck what you think about me to people who are close to you okay. because we are so concerned about what people think about us mm -hmm. So can I put and, it into context? So uh, this was an, uh, an exercise we had to do as a couple. So Pete had to stand in front of me, look me in the eyes. So like we had to make soul contact and really connect on a deep level. And then Peter had to say to me, I don't, don't give an don't. F what you think about me. And then, um, and then he had to keep saying that till it was true in his body. So not just words that are reverberating around mm. the room till actually his nervous system um, caught the message. And so I had to do that with Peter as well. And that as a couple is very, very liberating and that heals that kind of codependency that sometimes happens, uh, well, a lot in families. And then when we came home from that experience, um, we invited all our children, so we've got six children and partners, we invited them to say that to us. So because I want my children to feel completely free and independent um, and strong in themselves. So I asked my children, could they please say that to me? So they stood in front of me as well, looked me in the eye and they had to say, Mom, I don't give an F what you think about me. And, and they actually found it really, really hard. It was very confronting for them, but um, I, kept, I got them to say it till they were really, really comfortable with it and that helped them on their journey because not only is it true anyway, but it makes them fully responsible for their own reality, mm -hmm. for their own quality of life. And that the beauty for me is they can't blame me for anything. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it's, it's quite, yeah. it's liberating. Yeah, it's just liberating yeah. in so many mm -hmm. levels and just do it slowly and, um, uh, well, it is challenging to start with, so there's no easy way around it, but it's very liberating. That was a coaching exercise that we mm. did one time at a retreat. And then um, a really big aha for me, which might have been quite similar. One time I had an in-depth coaching session with a coach in America, and he said, Grada, uh, uh, you have a story running around in your brain that's telling you that you have to be in a room with the people or with people who you despise and i thought mm, what what the f is he going on about here but actually it was so true it really pulled me up and i knew then like a second later i knew i could see how that it played out in my entire life because as you know peter and i um we spend most of our life devoted to a certain cult a church it was like a nameless church so we we met with people three times a week and you know all sets of rules and all the rest i won't go into it now but the truth of it was that um i had trained myself that it was the christian thing to just always to be think. sitting around in fellowship with people <clears throat> who there were people there that i did despise because they were child molesters and um and it was all sort of swept under the carpet because you're not allowed to judge your brother and all the rest and you know there's so many ways that i compromised myself that was a big one for me and then it also played out in many other small ways that i tended to give my time and energy away to lots of people who actually pulled me down so they didn't uplift me so now i'm really careful so that was just one coaching moment that i could see my whole life how did it impacted me and also my future how it was going to impact my future if i kept doing the same thing over and over so i'm um, so that piece of advice in itself would be worth a million dollars to me already right so this is 
And it didn't cost me a million dollars. Plus, plus yeah. if, you, if you think about the people that you do spend most of your time with, just ask, do they pull me down or do they lift me up? Or a better question yeah. is also, how am I honouring myself in this mm. situation or in this relationship or in this room? You could think of an invisible room, of course, because do you know what? There is a rule, that, and this is an unwritten rule, but it's true. We become like the five people that we hang around with the most, right? And that's who we become like. So this is actually a real serious topic that you need to question yourself and you we... investigate your life. Shine a torch in your life and... Because we spend yeah. the most time with ourselves. So we have to be, become aware of... It's total, all to do with awareness. Total yeah. self-awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think asking for help is the first step mm. in a, uh, when it comes to awareness. Awareness is absolutely priceless. And of course, uh, in today's world now, what we're going through, what we're seeing all around us, is that people are... <clears throat> waking up it's a waking up process like we're waking up to the fact that um, um, our politicians have been lying to us and they're still lying to us now um, we know that there's other things happening there's a hidden agenda we can't put our finger on it and there's so many things happening now at the moment it's all to do like if we had a little bit more awareness would have been more easy for us to read all that and to understand, wouldn't mm. it? So awareness is key in your relationship as well. So uh, I hope um, that you found this helpful and I hope that we are inspiring you to reach out as well, reach out to people around you who can help you, who can help you over and hurt all so that you don't waste 10 years of your life doing the same thing over and over. Mm. And of course, um, Peter and I are here to help you. You can send us an email or in Peter on his phone. We can help you with all sorts of issues in your life. And, the, and the, that speed, accuracy and support has been a real lifesaver at times for me in the we last actually, few years. Uh, we wrote yeah. it down, like so we wrote down those three words speed accuracy and support so speed means don't just sit on it don't put it off all the time so um i will put this in the in the link uh to the video so but there are some questions here so you actually don't need to write it down because i post them but these are the questions that will dramatically transform your life so first of all you need to think of something that irritates you in your life like what is it, what's going on in your life today that you find irritating? <clears throat> and it might have been going on for 10 years already. Or something that you find messy and non-completed. Yeah, what is draining yeah. your energy yeah. could be another good question. Is there something in your life right now that's draining your energy? Okay. I can't really think of anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> I probably can, but um, this is yeah. about you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Because we can only think of one thing at a time and we're mm -hmm. doing this at the moment. Yeah. Okay, question mm -hmm. number two. What do you need to do to fix it? Right? So remember you have to take 100% accountability and responsibility for your life. Question number three. Who could you ask for help? Or who could handle this for you? Who could assist you? Who could support you? Or who could give you information to put you on the right track? Right? So, four, how do you stop yourself from asking this question? And how, how have you stopped yourself from asking up until now? That's probably a really good one to answer. Because, for instance, Peter, when he didn't ask me to help him carry the bunk beds to the cottage for 50 meters, what, uh, what stopped you from asking? Did you actually think to ask? That's just a little example. What stopped you from asking? Well, I didn't want just, you, you to... I think it was just habit. I'll just well, answer it for you. Well, it is, it is habit and mm. it takes about 66 days to instill a new habit. Right. So mm -hmm. we, we 
probably of all got habits that mm. may not be good, but no. if we stop that habit, we need mm. to instill a, anyway, a better one. I saw Peter... And committed to do it. Yeah, uh, being the, mm. the, the mule, the donkey, you know, carrying all that luggage when he was going towards the cottage, so I stopped him and I offered help. And we had a bit of a chat about him asking me for help more often. And we had lots of fun, didn't we? <laughs> Cutting, um, I was puffing and panting. We, we had, had to, to stop, st stop a few times. Stop every four <laughs> meters. And then uh, when we got to the cottage, the bunk bed was a bit muddy and I had to sponge it off and all that. But it was way more fun, wasn't it, Pete? Yeah. And it really, yeah, we had fun together. So we actually had quality time. So what is the possible benefit of asking? That's point five. And when will you commit, commit to asking? So put a date and a time. So for instance, it could be, um, let's say, could be as simple as you have a sore tooth and, and you know, you, the dentist really needs to look at it, but you don't know of a good dentist. So who could you ask? Who could give you the information? So when are you going to ask the right person for that information? And when are you going to pick up the phone to book and so on to book the dentist and really commit that to yourself and so it starts with little things like little things like you can even it can be a little thing like can you please pass me the butter when you're sitting up at the table or can you please get something out of the fridge for me or can you please shut the back door for me just lots of little things um, that will help you to to uh, break through that old habit of not asking and then, yeah, move on to bigger things. And um, because you never know how much you don't know that other people do know. That's another thing. We know what we know. We know what we don't know. And then there is a huge area that we're not aware of that's outside our awareness that we're not even conscious of. This is all stuff mm. we don't know, but somebody else might have some really good information that can transform your life and so this is where asking questions becomes really really important so hope you enjoy this and that i've inspired you to stop feeling stuck if you feel like complaining as well if you want to complain about something that means you're stuck and it means you need to sit down and think now what's irritating me the most about this situation who can i who can i ask for help ask for help and when am I going to ask when I'm going to pop that question and, what, and do it soon? And yeah, and what improves your life is that do it soon with accuracy and support. Yeah, and look, yeah. if somebody says, no, I can't help you, you haven't died actually, that's a good experience. <laughs> Let's say you might feel a bit mm. rejected. I think underneath it all is a fear of rejection always. But you get used to that as well. <laughs> and uh, you you realize, hey, I haven't died, and that is actually fun. So then you can ask again, and it will re literally um, make your life incredibly amazing, and that's what we want for you. And if someone says, no, they can't, you can ask why they can't. So keep on asking questions. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't hurt to mm -hmm. ask questions. Mm -hmm. You'll... If you don't ask questions, mm -hmm. then you'll have thoughts going round and round in your head, making stories up for yourself that yeah. aren't even true. Yeah, we start to assume things. Yeah, yeah. we assume things mm -hmm. far too much. Yeah. So, yeah, asking for help, is it will change your life. So, mm. um, so don't be like Peter Me, start <laughs> a lot younger than we did, and then be like Peter Me and do... Um, hire the help of experts and um, and really increase your level of happiness and meaningfulness and your connection with yourself will just be amazing. You, Thanks for you, tuning you in. You can see that staircase behind us. I did ask for help to put that up. Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's a few random things. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for tuning okay. in, everyone. And I um, hope you have a really amazing week. Stay well and stay safe. Bye-bye.